Hi all, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Topic that uh, we will have a look at today is from FRM level two, and it's from uh, credit risk measurement and management. So we will have a look at one of the question from chapter introduction to credit risk modeling and assessment. And uh, question that we will be having a look at today is I get this screen. So let's start. And yes, uh, very interesting one. Uh, this question was asked in many forums as a query today. So uh, let's see. There is a firm, ABC, which has current value of $100 million. Its only outstanding debt is three-year zero-coupon bond with a face value of $80 million. Compute the expected loss given default. And uh, we have been given a uh, current interest rate which is 5% and expected return of the firm assets 20% and volatility of firm as 30%. So, uh, and the, we, are, we are given some options. So, I mean, at this point, we are not uh, concerned about the options. Important thing is that uh, how do we break down this question and arrive at the right answer? So, logical flow for this question is very important. So, overall firm's value is 100 million, out of which, uh, like, the debt part is 80 million, which is payable in three three years, like no interim uh, interest payments directly at three uh, three years down the line. We have to pay 80 million. So very important to note that this is a kind of a future value. And uh, this is kind of your uh, 100 million is your present value, the current value of the firm. So these are two important aspects. And yes, I mean, looking at the question, uh, did you feel that uh, like same situation? So you might have noticed that uh, this, this this question might have given you the same uh, experience that uh, the people in the video clip were having. So let's understand, going back to our question, let's understand a few basics. So we will use Merton model. You may feel that I know I know you, you are preparing for level two. So you by now you will have some sense that uh, to calculate value of the firm also, we use Merton model, which is mainly what you might have studied in your level one for pricing options. So there is a good analogy between how do you price an option and how do you value the firm. So Merton model treats the capital structure of a borrower as a call option of the firm's assets. So uh, shareholders are views as a buyer of call option and then creditors are Right, as so, uh, you can think, uh, you know, right, that uh, a capital structure is split into two parts equity and debt. So, the shareholders or equity holders are buyer of the call option, who feels that firm's value will go up, and uh, at the same time, the people who are debtors are writers they are just writing the call option they they uh they feel that they just need a fixed cash flow from uh from the from the firm like uh that that's why like you can think of shareholders or equity holders as a buyer of the call option on the firm's value creditors debtors temporarily own portion of company but shareholders have a right to buy back the loan by paying it off and refinance or refinancing so equity holders can pay uh debt holders or they can refinance the date at a lower rate that's as purely uh equity holders call a simple example involves with the only one loan with a phase value l and maturity at time t shareholders only will pay off debt if the market value of the firm is greater than debt l so, like, uh, you can think in that way. If the firm's value uh, is less than your debt value, there would be some portion which would be default 
under default. In fact, that's the same thing that we are interested in. We are interested in calculating loss given default. So uh, shareholders can only pay you if your firm's value is greater than L. If the market value or a firm value is less than debt, the firm's net value would be negative. That, would, that means that there would be a default. And uh, like gradually we are moving to the question, like if we want to calculate loss given default, how do we calculate? We understood that if the firm's value is negative, then uh, it will default. So we will try to understand that uh, what's the chance of firm's value being uh, negative so these are the two expressions that you have already seen in your level one when dealing with the black schools model for option pricing. So these are D1 and D2. These come from the return distribution of uh, underlying over here. It would be return distribution of the firm's return. So D1, D2 and corresponding to that. So the, these can be thought of Z1 and Z2 if we refer to normal distribution and corresponding probabilities of these D1 and D2 are ND1 and ND2. These are quite fancy looking formulas like over here, like you can think of asset and what is the liability to asset liability and uh, D2 you can calculate using this formula also or this formula. The only difference is just minus and over here is plus. I mean, one can, if one is interested and have a good uh, ample amount of time one can substitute uh, d1 here and just try to simplify you will get this so the only difference is over here we have minus in d2 and we have plus in d1 and uh, more important is like why i uh, i have written these intuition because uh, the great indian mathematician mr srinivas ayankar ramanujan had said that an equation for me has no meaning unless it's unless it expresses a thought of God. Eventually, every equation that we come across will have some intuition. So over here, like ND1 represents the probability of excise adjusted for the expected stock price if the option is excise. Little technical, but in a simple language, it's a probability that gives you the expected value of stock given option is excise. What is the expected value of stock if the option is excise? That's what your ND1 is. And uh, the simple uh, other interpretation is it is a delta. It's a delta of European call option. And uh, going back to ND2. So please be very attentive. From this only we will link it with the loss given default nd2 represents the probability that option will be in the money at expiration it's also a risk adjusted probability for option excise so in simple you can say that nd2 is a probability that your option would be excised now very important be very attentive be very attentive let me just make one point here very important point now if when you will excise when the shareholders will excise the call option on the firm value when your assets values have grown then only you will ex then only shareholders will excise this option but what we are interested in that uh, when the default is occurred default would be occurring when your ND2, like the option is not excise. So basically, we are interested in finding N minus T2. In the same way, when the default will occur, when your spot is less than your strike. In this case, when your asset is less than your liability value. So in this case also, I am interested in finding minus T1 instead of nd1 so these are the two important aspects if you understand this well this in fact this is a center of the concepts so n n minus t1 and n minus 2 why because we are looking for the default 
And if we just look at ND1 and ND2, in fact, we are looking for the positive side wherein defaults haven't occurred. But we are interested in loss given default because we want to quantify what is the loss if default occurs. So this is what we are interested in. Liability when your option is not excise. What is the value of? So basically, this is a probability of default. When you say N of minus D2, it gives you the probability of default. And uh, over here, like when your asset, what this you can think of this as a spot. But uh, this spot is like, if you recollect, I made one important point. 100 was a current value. But this everything that we are talking about is an expiry. Usually you will see the discounting or compounding factor with the strike. But uh, this, this is a little different scenario. You have to calculate the future value of your firm value. Like assuming that uh, your expected return are 20%. So uh, what would be the value of 100 in three years, assuming the returns are 20% per annum, like you, you, we were given this in the first slide. And N minus D1, what is like, I want to know that if, if the option is not excised, what is the expected value of this spot? That's the probability N minus D1. These are the two key things. If you understand this, you're sorted. And uh, these were the things that we were given, like PV of total asset value, firm value is 100 million, liability value is 80 million, and R we are given, uh, please important to, uh, very important to note, we are not using this anywhere. Like you might be given some information just to make you confused. So be very careful. And this is expected value of the, uh, like this is expected return. And uh, the volatility of firm value is 30% and time is 3. So let's find first D1 and D2. D1 and D2. Then we will find N of minus D1 and minus D2. So the formula, natural log of A over L plus, this should be mu, mu plus sigma square by 2 times T over sigma times root T. If we substitute these value 100 over 80 plus 20%, which is the expected return, plus your variance, half of variance times 3, volatility times square root of 3. And if you just uh, do calculation 100 over 80, 1.25, find ln and uh, substitute like uh, just do a calculations and uh, get the value of... Uh, D1 after substituting this like ln of 100 over 80 that is 0 0.2231 that has been substituted here and 20% uh, plus your sigma over n is 2.45 that has been substituted here times 3 and uh, likewise like you can just do a calculation during your BSM you would have done this so you get D1 as 1.8445 in the same way or you can just substitute like it's a if you are not expected to calculate like both you it's a very easy like if you anyway have to calculate d1 it's very easy to substitute d1 in this expression and get the value of d2 so if i substitute d1 we get d2 as 1.3249 please be careful like this would n of minus d2 will give you the probability of default so total liability current outstanding is 80 if we get n of minus d2 if you multiply uh, we will get something but this portion will give you some there would be some recovery right it's not really your uh, you directly multiply there would be something that you will uh, debtor would like to have from the shareholders uh, equity and uh, if we check what is nd1 you can notice that ND1 is 1.84. So if I go here, 1.8. Uh, ideally, it should have been 4. So uh, this value should have been used. So please use this value. Uh, describe this value. Of course, there will be some rounding of issue, but try using uh, 0.967. I think it's just a highlight issue. We have used 0.9671. 
So this one is correct and this one has been used 1.84 and 1.32 uh, 1.32 value is 0 0.9066 if you substitute and try to so n of minus d1 is 1 minus n d1 so subtract this just along your way so you get 3% which is n of minus d1 that is expected value of stock price or firm value if option is not excised likewise you can calculate n of minus d2 which is 1 minus n d2 which was like in this case it was 1.32 point i mean it's like uh just sub it would be 10 percent approximately 90 percent you see but exactly it's 9.34 percent so n of minus d1 is 3.329 percent then and over here it's 9.34 percent n of minus d2 now it's very straightforward like uh as we talked about that uh loss given default would be liability that we have times probability of default minus some recovery that will be happening so liability is 80 times probability of default we just saw it was 9.34 percent minus recovery would be like your firm value that would grow at a 20 percent over three years times your uh n of minus d2 that is expected value of this when your option is not excised so that is 3.29 percent if you calculate this expression you will uh like the first component it's given here you will get 7.472 and the second component that is a recovery part that you will see here is 5.993 and ultimately if you subtract it because there would be some recovery from the default that would be happening because we have to calculate loss given default what is the loss of the default locus so it's 1.479 and if i go back to our option it's 1.4 just some rounding off you can do uh, i just we just use the uh some systems to perform calculation because the video would have been uh too lengthy if we would have done it using pen but yeah feel free to perform the calculation and if you think that there was some rounding off please put it in the comment box that would uh, that would really help us understand all like software tweaks from the manual calculation so right answer is c and uh yeah uh like if you think that video was useful somewhere you would be will be not like the people that were tense looking at the tough question perhaps So we want to uh, be confident like her and uh, trust us like it's it would be uh, definitely can be achieved from uh, our mentorship. So if you think that uh, there was some value addition in your learning from the video and uh, if you have got any requirement out of the six points that you see on your screen, uh, we gather that uh, like these are like it's it's a the one to three is a subject knowledge and four to six is something which which are like tools that that can help you uh, apply whatever you learn from one to three and uh, yes like uh, we have across like who whosoever is involved in our uh, content creation teaching are like like they have got practical exposure that will uh, really nourish your knowledge learning and it will really make you confident uh, when you are on the job. Like uh, like if your moral is good, you perform well and uh, you do well in your career. So that's very important. Uh, so 
reach out to a team if you think that uh, we can get to you best and yeah don't forget to uh, like comment and subscribe to our youtube channel and yeah please do like subscribe and share with your peers so that they also get benefited out of uh, like the key concepts that were taught in a uh, few minutes that were like us in the various forms today stay connected with the channel thank you